It's hard to watch, but Crystal's phone captures the frenzied moments and sheer terror unfolding at 11 minutes past two as the volcano erupts. Run. Welcome to Mojo Travels, and in this instalment of Vacation from Hell, we're looking at the Fakari White Island eruption. There were people near us screaming out to us, we're here, we're here, help's here, help's arrived. For this list, we'll be discussing the catastrophic 2019 eruption and its aftermath. Are you a fan of our videos? Be sure to subscribe to Mojo Travels and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Volcanoes are irresistible to many people, and as Icarus found out the terrible way in Greek mythology, devastating consequences can follow when you get too close to a very dangerous destination. Of course, modern volcano tourism is supposed to be safe, but with adventure being a selling point for New Zealand tourism, a little danger is part of the appeal. On December 9th, 2019 though, tourists visiting Fakari got more danger than they bargained for. Within a few minutes, a vacation went up in smoke, along with numerous lives. You could hear the sound of all the rocks hitting the ground and people just screaming um, because no one knew what to do. Everyone was just petrified. And then when it hit, it was just darkness. It would be New Zealand's most fatal volcanic travesty since Mount Tarawira's eruption in 1886. Rescuers were able to evacuate 23 people, but believe close to 50 may have been on the island. Located just 50 kilometers from New Zealand's North Island's east coast, this active andesite stratovolcano has been privately owned by Buttle Family Trust since 1953. The island's Maori name is Tapuya Afakari, which translates to the dramatic volcano. Between 1976 and 2000, the island regularly endured eruptions. Although things calmed down going into the 21st century, eruptions still occurred in 2012 and 2016. While unauthorised visitors couldn't land on the island, tourist organisations like White Island Tours have made Fakari a hotspot. You'll notice there's an area where there's a bit of bubbling water. Please don't go too close to it because it is under cut. Not quite sure where it, where it sort of ends up under our feet. And um, you may need to use your mask up there, okay? It's been advertised as New Zealand's most active volcano, even popping up in blockbuster franchises like Lord of the Rings. White Island tours didn't exactly hide the risks involved. The higher the, um, the level, the more risk there is of an eruption. Level three is an eruption. Oh, really? So we're on level two nearing level three now. Not long before the 2019 eruption, the website warned patrons of an alert level two, indicating moderate to heightened volcanic unrest and potential for eruption hazards to occur. I didn't fully comprehend what a level two meant because I don't really know much about volcanoes in general. But when he said that it had to be a bit quicker than usual, I was thinking, oh, well, that's a little weird. However, the warning noted that White Island Tours follows a comprehensive safety plan which determines our activities on the island at the various levels. This seemed to suggest that the risks were minimal and measures would be taken to ensure a safe trip. After all, almost 20,000 people visited annually for over three decades. Children took school trips to the island. What were the odds that this trip would go awry? What Stephanie and her family didn't know was that the level two warning had been in place for two weeks. According to volcanologist Joshua von Otterloo, it was an accident waiting to happen. Nobody was prepared at 14.11 New Zealand daylight time or 2.11 p.m. when the eruption occurred. Oh 38 of the 47 people on the island were ovation of the sea's passengers on a 12-day cruise. The cruise's online promotion read, get close to the drama, which some unfortunately took to heart. The ash plume skyrocketed almost 12,000 feet above the vent, with some people reportedly standing close by. Were there people still on the island? Man. Were there people still on the island? Yeah, there were. Jesus. According to University Auckland volcanologist Shane Cronin, a steam blast alone could be fatal for those in the vent's vicinity. While there were fewer visitors than the initially estimated 100 people, a substantial number wouldn't leave the island alive. Even the ones who did were far from out of the woods. The force was just that strong that my whole body was being shoved and pushed and rolled onto the ground. I was just hitting things while getting burnt at the same time. It was, 
the most terrifying moment of my life. 23 people were rescued with help from tour operators. A trio of nearby helicopter pilots were responsible for retrieving 12. It's just like a movie set and something you'd never prepared for. There was a lot of victims and a lot of burns and yeah, a lot of people lying pretty still. Controversially, rescue crews didn't arrive until two and a half hours after the eruption due to safety concerns. Several of the rescued victims would succumb to the injuries by the end of December. By January 2020, 21 victims were declared dead. The final victim, Horst Westenfelder of Germany, died on July 2nd, 2020 from medical complications while being treated for his injuries. Although the official death toll is 22, two people were never found. Australian teenager Winona Langford and New Zealand tour guide Hayden Marshall Inman, who were both presumed dead. Police believe Sydney teenager Winona Langford and local tour guide Hayden Marshall Immonen have been washed out to sea. 25 of the 47 island visitors survived, although they all received injuries with many being seriously burned. Most of the victims were from Australia, while others hailed from New Zealand, the US, Europe and Asia. Volcanologist Shane Cronin described the eruption as probably the actual worst case scenario. What makes the incident all the more tragic is that the warning signs have been present and largely underestimated. What's unique about that crater is that it's an amphitheater shaped crater with very steep sides, so you're totally enclosed within a confined space with nowhere to escape should an event suddenly occur. Jeff Kilgow of GNS Science noticed localized surface deformation, although this didn't necessarily confirm massive pressure buildup. Tourist companies saw rises in gas emissions and seismic rumblings, but this only warranted slightly raised alert levels. GeoNet, which monitors New Zealand's geological activity, deemed the island safe to visit. Clearly, the island was misrepresented. But who shares a majority of the responsibility? By November 2020, WorkSafe New Zealand had charged 13 parties. The parties were charged with not meeting health and safety standards and taking tourists to the White Island, or called Wakari in Maori, where the surprise eruption occurred. Seven were tourist companies, including White Island Tours. The decision to prosecute Kahu NZ Limited, Volcanic Air Safaris Limited, and Aeris Limited was met with controversy, as their helicopter pilots aided in the rescue. A petition collected thousands of signatures to get charges against them dropped. GNS Science, National Emergency Management Agency, and Fakari Management Limited rounded out the 10 organizations charged. The final three were individuals, Andrew, James, and Peter Buttle, who oversaw Fakari Management. All 13 initially pleaded not guilty for health and safety breaches, although flight operator InFlight eventually entered a guilty plea, being fined over $200,000. WorkSafe New Zealand didn't file charges against Ovation of the Seas. However, the cruise's operator, the Miami-based Royal Caribbean International, and ID Tours have faced legal action for negligence. Matt and Lauren Yuri claim Royal Caribbean and ID Tours New Zealand Limited did not warn them of the heightened volcanic activity on the island before the excursion. In any other year, the Fakari eruption might have been the most talked about news story. Of course, this all happened just as the COVID-19 pandemic was getting started. Had the eruption only occurred a few months later, cruises likely would have been cancelled and lives might have been saved. On the incident's first anniversary, survivors, rescue workers and loved ones of the deceased gathered in Fakatane, which was just off White Island shore. At precisely 2.11pm, they shared a moment of silence. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern and Governor-General Dame Patsy Reddy were also present. I say to those who have lost and grieve, you are forever linked to this place and our nation, and we will continue to hold you close. Haere, haere, haere atura. There was no official ceremony the following year, with some feeling that the pandemic hadn't allowed people to properly grieve. 60 Minutes Australia has extensively covered the eruption and its aftermath, interviewing several survivors in November 2020. In June 2022, the program interviewed survivor Stephanie Browett, who spent two weeks in a coma and six months in a hospital upon receiving third-degree burns to 70% of her body. Her 21-year-old sister Crystal and her father Paul didn't survive. 
it would be two and a half years until Browett was able to remove her compression bandage. I do wish my dad and sister were still alive and still with me and that they could be here for this moment. Browett and her mother are among those suing Royal Caribbean. In May 2022, the National Emergency Management Agency won an appeal to drop the charges against the company. The Bustle family is also attempting to get the charges against them dropped. The defendants are expected to face trial in 2023 and could receive a maximum fine of $1.5 million if convicted. As for Fakari itself, on-land tours have been off-limits since the 2019 eruption, but you can still take a scenic flight of the island. After everything that's happened though, should Fakari be condemned altogether? The island was a major tourist attraction for years. With a new alert system and more precautions, could Fakari's reputation be restored? Or is that just another disaster waiting to happen? So what do you think? Would you risk another horror like this just to get near a volcano? Or do you think it's been proven to be far too risky and would dishonor those whose lives were lost? Different travelers might have different answers. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Mojo Travels and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.